toolsmachinery.com. Hi, today at M&M Tool we're actually building some displays for the showroom here. We figured it would be a good chance to show you how to use the new Craig K4 MS, the master system, the Craig master system. Okay, so we're kind of going to work backwards here. We've already set up for the for what the jig or the the pieces that we're using. We're using inch and a half. Well, we're using two by fours, so inch and a half thickness. But we'll just reset it so you can see how we did it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull off this dust port. And as you can see, we did a really fancy rig on the collecting or connecting the dust hose. Um, but right here on the side of the Craig K4 jig. It, should, it has a whole bunch of numbers there. So what you'll do is you'll set it for the thickness of the material. So right here I'm using inch and a half thick stock. So I'm going to set it on that inch and a half line. And you just use the jig as the line, you know, which is right there. Okay. So if I was doing three quarter material, I'd go to there. If I'm doing inch and a half, which I am, I go right here. And the really cool thing is they've got holes already in the jig itself. So it's real nice and easy and fast to just connect it. So we're going to go right there to inch and a half, screw that in, it's ready to roll. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the, the collar on the drill bit for inch and a half. Okay. So what you do is you grab your Allen wrench, which I put over here. So your Allen wrench, which comes with the jig and so what you're paying attention to here is the step on the drill bit. If you look at the drill bit, there's a, a little piece and then it steps up to a bigger size. You're going to pay attention to the step and then there's markings, which you, you can just barely see through the sawdust here, but there's markings here on the jig and that's how you set the jig right there. You pull it over and set the step on the same line as the line that you want, which we want inch and a half, and you can probably just barely see that, maybe. If you can't, then it's there. So, and then you're gonna, so you'll bring the step up there, bring your collar right there, and then tighten that collar down. And then that's ready to go. We'll stick it back here in the drill. Make sure we're good. You don't want it off center. That makes for problems. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this back clamp for the thickness of our material. Now before we were doing a three quarter inch piece and so it was way out here, okay? But we want to do a, an inch and a half thick piece and so we're going to reset that. So I would bring, knowing that I need to go way back, the first thing I do is I just spin that back a ways, just like that. I bring my piece in here. And I, want it, I don't want it to be so hard to push down that, I, that I'm having to really work at it. I just want it to have a good hold on there. So I'm going to spin that back a little bit. Still a little bit hard. So we're going to go a little bit more. And that's perfect right there. I can get it without having to go around to the back side of the jig and really... Okay, sorry about that folks. Back to clamping. Um, this, so we've got the clamp set up where we want it to be and we can tighten up this nut just to make sure it stays there but usually it's kind of self-tightening as you go along. You'll, you'll get the feel as you use it. Um, the other thing that, that you can do, you don't have to do this. One option is to just eyeball, you know. So I bring it up here and I know that's about centered. The other option, you know, right between the holes. The other option would, would be to, to set your stop over here on this one side, which is what I've done because it makes it a little bit faster. I'm, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm doing lots of different uh, posts here. So to set a stop is kind of a little bit easier. So all I did is I got it about where I want it. I mean, you can be really precise if you want, but I, I just need about for what we're doing. And I just set the stop to where it's almost centered here on the boards. Um, the jig is, that is. So once that's centered on there, we just clamp that in. And the, actually, I'm off my stop a little bit. So I'm going to go over, clamp that in, and then I'll set our dust collection back up. I'm just going to get loud here for a sec. We're going to turn on the dust collector.
guys, uh, welcome back. I'm Jim. Uh, last time I just showed you how to use the K4 pocket, Craig pocket hole jig, and now I'm going to show you how to put the pieces of wood together. If you look inside the pockets with that drill bit that, that you use to drill the holes, it's got that step in it. Well, if you look inside, there's the little where the little piece drills in is where you're, you've got another hole. Well, so you're going to put your screw, you're going to put your screw into that little hole. It's going to be hard to see on here but there's a little hole in there and you're just going to put your screw in there and you'll drive it in. An impact driver comes in really handy but you know on here I'm okay how do I say this so the length of the screw is determined by what pieces the thickness of the pieces that you use and so you don't want to drive it too far so with an impact driver sometimes you'll have the, the tendency to drive a little too far just when you feel it grab on the bottom these are pan head screws and when you feel it bottom out on there then you want to stop because otherwise you, you can go too far and punch through the other side of your piece. On an inch and a half piece, and especially where this isn't real, doesn't need to be real pretty, we'd be okay. But on a three quarter inch cabinet, you'd really want to be careful. So, but really easy to do, really simple. And also, Craig makes it really easy with these too because they tell you what size screw to use and what kind of material. So, really nice. Um, we are just gonna, we're going to use now also, again, the impact driver. And then this is their right angle clamp. So this little piece, so on their normal clamps, you've got two flat pads. Whereas on this one, you have a bar. Well, this bar fits inside the pocket hole. And then I clamp my other piece to it, OK? So it makes it really handy uh, for installing things. If you have a good flat bench, you may not need this. But then when you're doing a big, long piece like this, this makes it really handy. They have some other clamps, too. They've got a right angle clamp. Uh, oh, that's this one. They've got a 90 degree clamp. So they've got a lot of cool clamps out there that'll really help you. So we're just going to set this up. And again, this is a, this piece, I'm not real concerned about it looking absolutely perfect. But I'm going to set it up to where all my edges are square and flush. And I'm going to clamp that together. Feel it in the back, make sure I did okay, which I didn't. So, I come back in here and do it again. Okay. Now, got this other, got the bottom one out. That'll work. The, beauty of, the other beauty of the Craig system is if you've got two screws in a piece, so long as one of those screws is lined up right, then the other screw you can play a little bit with. So if I'm off a sixteenth on the one, and I get the other one lined up perfectly, then I can move it over and we'll be okay. So as so long as this back one is lined up properly, then I can realign the top one. So now that's ready. And Make sure that top one's lined up. Okay, that's all it took. Now we're in there. And like I told you before, you can glue these pieces if you need to, but for what we're doing, we don't need to. So, uh, again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, hesitate to call. Thank you very much for watching. Toolsandmachinery.com. Ding, ding.